Hi, I'm Connie, and this is From Chaos to Peace with Connie, where I explore, sometimes solo and often with a guest, how a few minutes a day can keep the chaos away. And with chaos, I'm talking about the physical, digital, social, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual clutter that can accumulate in our life. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. And if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. I'm so honored that you're checking out my podcast. This is episode number 138 of the From Chaos to Peace podcast, where a few minutes a day keep the chaos away and where you learn how clutter is so much more than you think and why I say that. That clearing your clutter is self-love. So in last week's episode, number 137, with Blaine Elkers, called Stressless Do More, Blaine was talking about single tasking, multitasking, and batch tasking. This reminds me of a blog post that I wrote way, way back seven years ago in August 2015. And I called it back then, are you batching or procrastinating? Because there is a risk that instead of batching, we start procrastinating. At least that's what was happening to me if I was not careful and if I was batching the wrong things. I need to intentionally decide what to batch, if anything. And because this has happened to me and still happens to me, I was thinking maybe I'm not alone in this and maybe batching hasn't really worked for you either and you feel bad about that. So let's talk about it. First, before we dive into batching, I want to say I'm here to tell you that you can still be very productive without batching. <laughs> because I also didn't batch way back in the 90s when I still had my corporate job as a financial controller with crazy 12 hour days because I did the work for two. What got me to be very productive and effective was and still is having systems and processes in place that work for me and also having an environment that supports me and doesn't sabotage me. But back to batching. What is batching, you may wonder? Well, batching means you collect a group of identical or similar activities and block off a big chunk of time in your calendar to do them all together at the same time. For example, if you have a podcast like me, you would batch time for writing several scripts, then batch time to record several episodes in one go. And then if you edit yourself, you would also batch that task and edit several episodes together at the same time. If that sounds daunting to you, that's exactly how I feel about it. And that's really not how I'm recording my podcast. If you don't have a podcast, but for example, a blog, then you would batch time to come up with topics, then batch time to outline several blog posts, then batch time to finish several blog posts, etc. Or you can batch and create your social media posts for the whole week ahead or for the whole month ahead, as some people are doing. You can batch writing and answering emails. You can batch phone calls and the list goes on. I hope you understand now what batch tasking is. The advantage that batching can offer, or let's say could offer, they say, and with they, I mean a lot of productivity gurus and experts. Again, so they claim that batching decreases procrastination and it increases our creativity and it decreases distraction and it boosts productivity and it saves us time and it cuts down stress. Well, intellectually, I can totally see the benefits of batching. I can see all the advantages that batching has, especially the part about a boost in productivity because you wouldn't context switching when you're batching. And context switching is when you change the task you're working on over and over and your brain has to realign and readjust every time to the next task. And this takes time and can slow you down quite a bit. 
So for example, if you're working on an important project and then the phone rings, then you talk on the phone, then you have to get back to your project then you have to first figure out again where you were and get back into it. But then maybe your, your computer dings and you read an email and that is context switching. You're constantly going back and forth and back and forth. So if you would turn off all the interruptions and just focus for two or three or four hours on one thing because you're batch tasking that I could see the benefits of batching. But now you might hear these claims of how advantageous batching is and you think, oh, batching to the win. And you start finding all the daunting tasks that you really don't want to do and you batch them all together and then you schedule a big block of time, sometime way in the future for you to do them. You might think, haha, by batching, I only have to deal with this once in a blue moon and in between I can forget about it. <laughs> I see this often with my clients. They want to batch the filing of documents, paper or digital, or they want to batch organizing and labeling their photos, or they want to batch entering their numbers into the bookkeeping app or getting their financial paperwork together for the tax accountant. All those tasks sound so daunting. So they want to batch those daunting tasks because that sounds like the right thing to do. And besides, again, that means you don't have to do it now. You can wait until you actually have a big chunk of time to do it sometime in the future when you can really focus on it. <laughs> But if you batch daunting tasks, they become even more daunting and very overwhelming until they are monsters that keep you up at night and you for sure don't want to tackle them. Because when the day arrives with your scheduled time to do this batching session, you will find every reason to not have to do it. And you welcome every thought your brain will offer you on why today is really not the right day to do it that you don't have to do it just yet and that you can wait and maybe even batch a little bit more together and then do it all in one swoop. While the experts claim batching decreases procrastination, my experience with myself and with my client is actually the opposite. Batching can result in major procrastination. That's why my credo is a few minutes a day keeps the chaos away. But of course, that doesn't mean we're constantly context switching from one task to the next like a bee flying from flower to flower. What I do myself and what I teach and implement with my clients are simple systems and processes that you can put in place where a few minutes a day or a few minutes a week take care of such daunting tasks in a way that is really easy and effortless. This is especially important when it comes to finances. You want to be up to date with your finances, no matter how small your business is. The only way you are in control of your numbers and you know what's going on in your business is if you are up to date. If you batch your finances to, let's say, once a month, then in that month, during that month, you're basically driving your business blind or you're flying it blind, whatever your picture is. <laughs> the only way you could do that is if you had a solid system and process in place and you know exactly what money comes in and what goes out and everything is automated. But even then, it's advantageous to check in with your finances on a regular basis to not get bad surprises. Other areas where a few minutes a day is really advantageous is keeping your workplace organized. And for that, you can check out episode 108 for my simple system on how I do that. And the other one is having your files organized so you find everything right away. Let's say you are dealing with your files and decide to batch this task for once a month, but soon it all turns sour because paper clutters up your desk or your dining room table, your kitchen counter or is scattered all around the house. And then the piles get higher and higher and the chaos becomes bigger. Trust me, I have seen some very big piles at clients houses. And then you plan to deal with it in time. But of course, you are not motivated today. You tell yourself you'll do it tomorrow or you plan a big chunk of time someday in the future. Just yesterday, I read somebody mentioning underneath a, uh, an ad about clutter clearing. They said, oh, I'm never motivated to clutter clear. Well, of course not. And the bigger the task gets, the less motivated are you going to be. Anyways, the other thing that happens is 
because you're not up to date with your stuff, invoices go missing and they may stay unpaid or you can't find anything when you need it and you feel stressed and annoyed. Does that sound familiar? Is something similar I see happening with digital files? Your computer desktop is filled with files. So you don't even see your beautiful background picture or you have important documents still somewhere in, in an email in your over full inbox and you have no clue where. Invoices again go missing or you forget to pay them. You have a hard time finding the files when you need them, especially when you are in a hurry. For example, you're on the phone and you would really need a certain information right now and you can't remember where it is because it is not filed properly. What you want to do instead again is creating a simple filing system and move your files to the right place on a regular basis, daily or every other day. Don't say you will batch this once a month. In this month, you will waste precious time working in an unorganized environment, searching for files like a maniac. You can check out episode 109 for how I suggest you tame your file monster. So those were two examples where batching is a bit dangerous to call it that. But um, other examples are if you if you think you need an entire day block to be blocked off to declutter your office or to declutter your basement or your garage or whatever area you are dreading to work on. Often we never find such a full day and for many many years we talk about how we need to declutter that area but we just don't have the time well of course not who has a full day to declutter something that only happens if we actually have an emergency and for some reason we have to do it or we want to move and then on top of all the stress of moving, we also have the stress of decluttering and organizing, or we just pack everything and pay extra to move all this clutter from the old house to the new house. Also not very ideal. How much easier is it to just do a little bit on a regular basis and soon you would have made so much progress already instead of procrastinating and thinking, oh, one day I will do it. <laughs> And just that you know, how do you think I know that? Because I'm no different than you. As I said, I noticed it in myself that batching can lead to procrastination and we're often tempted to batch things that we don't like to do. So are all these experts wrong when they say batching is the way to go? Not necessarily, but you have to make sure you do the batching the right way and for the right reasons and for the right tasks. And then batching needs a lot of structure and a system. And most of all, it needs your discipline. The discipline that when the day comes where you have your batched session of doing whatever you said you're going to do in that session, you're actually going to do it. <laughs> And if you don't feel you have the discipline to do a few minutes a day or a few minutes a week, what makes you think when the task is more scary and more overwhelming that you have the discipline to do it then? I sure don't. So make sure the tasks, especially the ones you dread, stay at a manageable size so you don't get overwhelmed and you start procrastinating. As always, a few minutes a day go a long way and they keep the chaos away. <laughs> of course, as always, I never tell you what to do or not to do. What I help you see is the effect that all that clutter you accumulate in your life, what effect that has on your life and on your business. So if you struggle with clutter in your home, office, files and finances, and you would like my help to create simple systems and processes to get organized, contact me. You can send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. My handle is in both. I am Connie Graf, or you can send me an email. Remember, clearing clutter is self-love and you are not broken. You are enough and you can bring your mess to me and together we can sort it out. Okay, my friend, that's it for today. Have a beautiful and amazing week. Talk to you next time. Take good care and be safe.
If you enjoyed this podcast episode and you want to go on a journey from chaos to peace in your home, office, and finances with me as your guide, opportunities to work with me one-on-one are available. Go to connygraf.com, C-O-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F.com to schedule your own personal Clutter to Clarity chat. And we will see if working together is a great fit. That is conigraph.com, C-O-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F.com.